Okay, chaps, we are here for the briefcase. It's in the cupboard. Vincent, darling, are we happy? Hello, Vincent. Vincent. We happy. I heard you're a bit of a watch snob. What? What? You said something disparaging about Seiko. You said you wouldn't be caught dead in one. When is a watch collection complete? Is there a perfect collection size? What watches should every collection have? Today I give my recommendations and discuss my reasoning behind them. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to another Gentry in a Jiffy episode. Now, as watch collectors, there are many traits and behavioral patterns we have in common. We lament the flipping of watches with seller's remorse. We get high off the thrill of the hunt the engrossing, never-ending learning, and the tracking down of bargains and unboxings of our trophies, grails, and discoveries. We love to discuss the minute details of collecting, of the watches we adore, um, and covet for that matter. And it's not really just a hobby, it's a lifestyle. And beyond that, I think it's the essential knowledge, uh, well, part of the essential knowledge that makes a well-rounded individual. Uh, now, of course, before I get into this, a little bit more, my wristwatch check naturally, as we're discussing uh, uh, essential watches. It is the Rolex Explorer on a Perlon. This is the newer Melange strap from Wrist Candy Watch Club. Absolutely loving it, a winning combination. I'll leave the links down below. There are watch collections based on themes, like an entire collection of just divers or pilot watches, for example. Maybe you collect only military watches or based on a variation of a color, a particular era perhaps, a watch designer, brand, type of complication, price point, or even country of origin. Our collection philosophies, predilections, desires, and tastes are as varied as are the options out there to satiate them. Besides, if we were all the same, it would be so boring. The almost infinite amount of choices out there and combinations gives it an almost perpetual, pun partly intended, um, addictive uh, quality to, to, to watch collecting. Is there such a thing as a perfect collection? Do we ever get to that kind of uh, state of utopia? The only way to truly find out is actually collecting and the experience of it. Aside from our overarching collecting philosophy, Another aspect of this wonderfully enjoyable hobby that I find myself particularly obsessed about is the collection size itself. Some collections are free from this predicament. For example, if you collected only Tudor Submariners or one from each year or reference, and this is very much your thing, once you have acquired them all, then surely the collection is complete. And therefore, this is the determining factor that dictates the amount. I very much admire collectors like that. There is something to respect about the devotion to one model, era, style or brand. There's a purity in it. I could totally see myself going that way with the Breitling Navitimer. For others, the size of their watch case or box determines the collection amount. It's different with every collector. There's always one watch that we obsess about more than others that speaks to something within us, most often than not in some ineffable way, directly to our soul, an inexplicable attraction. The Navitimer for me is a really good example of this. I have no intention of piloting a plane or making calculations on the sliding scale, but yet I love the watch. Sometimes it's not even the physical features of the watch, but what it represents, the connotations, the connections to monumental moments in history, or perhaps a famous movie scene etched into our childhood memories, or it being worn on the wrist of a personal role model. What is your special watch? What is that watch that you obsess about beyond all others? Please do share in the comments. I'd love to hear uh, your feedback on that. So unless you have a specialized themed collection, 
you will likely be like the majority of collectors out there, with an eclectic mix based on function and the watch's style. Traditionally in the same way, we have different clothes for different situations, climates or functions. Watches are very much the same way. But can a single watch do all of this? Does a single do-it-all watch collection even exist? Can a single watch be a collection? Like the previously mentioned themed collection, there is something very admirable about having that one watch collection, that ultimate do-it-all piece, the, the watch, uh, I guess, to rule them all, so to speak. And I think deep down, every watch collector, to a certain degree, kind of aspires to that. Even if you had to sacrifice collecting as a pastime and all the associated pleasures it brings, finding that one special watch is perhaps the ultimate challenge. After all, there really never is such a thing as perfection. There is, however, an undeniable romantic and alluring attraction in having just one watch. Nowhere is this more perfectly encapsulated than with James Bond. One man, one watch, any situation. Shocking. There with him on every daring adventure, every scratch and natural patina adding to the nostalgia, the memories and the historicity of the watch. A personal signature of sorts, worn on the important moments in life. This after all is what makes a family heirloom and the attached sentimentality so important to us. In one place he knew he could hide something, is that Five long years he wore this watch, up his I gave the watch to you. But hold on a second. In several of the newer movies, Bond changes from the Aqua Terra to a different Seamaster. So does that make Bond a collector now too? After all, he is well-rounded enough to know about esoteric subjects like Lepidopterology. Or is it Amiga simply cashing in? The problem with collecting multiple watches is where does it end? We then enter difficulties when we lust after some new hottie, neglecting faithful loved ones, only to sell them on and then encounter the dreaded seller's remorse. Some are fortunate enough to simply never need to flip past purchases, but then the danger of hoarding and safe queens occur, with watches never being worn. For some it can even bring on a state of anxiety, but one definite advantage of a larger collection is when you have not had that watch in rotation for a while and you finally put it back into rotation, you almost have a second honeymoon experience with it. And so the trials and tribulations, advantages and disadvantages of collecting continue. There is no right or wrong when it comes to collecting. Uh, there is no definitive amount, it varies for everybody. However, there is four watches I do suggest that everybody considers owning and in a kind of way, uh, in its own way I should say, makes for a, a, a great standalone collection or the backbone of a larger collection. Firstly, I feel a beta watch is absolutely necessary. How hard you bash it about and what you intend to use it for is up to you. But fundamentally, nobody in their right mind would go washing a car or mowing a lawn or storming a hostile enemy position in an elite commando unit wearing a Patek. Quartz and digital is mostly the go-to choice here for obvious reasons. Secondly, the complete antithesis of the beta is of course the dress watch. As the name implies, it's for those times when something elegant, refined and slender is needed to slide under a dapper cuff. Your definition of what constitutes as dapper may be entirely different to the next person. And so don't be too concerned about being ultra traditional, unless that is what you like of course. A watch that is a great conversation piece, perhaps something with a personal history or quirky complication is always great with those less gregarious or when you just run out of small talk. Having your dress watch being the wild card in quote marks of the collection is always fun too. But if you want to go ultra traditional, a true dress watch has always been more about less is more, often skipping on the small seconds and being as minimal as possible in every regard. Thirdly, the everyday watch. 
the Monday to Friday, sartorially versatile daily driver. Most often a pilot or field watch with great legibility serves well here. Another recommendation is a useful complication, like a date, day, chronograph or GMT to keep track of time in a more professional setting in a multitude of ways or across multiple time zones. A great example is a world time complication for those who work in the stock market and need to keep track of financial centers across the world like Hong Kong, London and so on. Lastly, the fourth watch is the sports watch, mostly for the weekends and also a little tougher than the average. It's often, but not always, a dive watch. It has to be able to take the rigors of exploration and adventure, no matter if it's going swimming at the beach or just the weekend traveling. The dive time bezel can also be used as a rudimentary chronograph if there is a need for it. There's nothing quite like going for a jog on the beach and using your diver to keep track of your cardio. Bold, functional, stylish, yet dependable and tough, a dive watch is everyone's best friend. And as James Bond so perfectly demonstrates, it can also be a do-it-all piece for when traveling light is required and perhaps you don't want to drag along the whole collection. So those are my four suggestions. Of course, it is only in my own opinion. Some people prefer five. Other people think uh, three is the magic number, <laughs> to, to quote De La Soul. Uh, do share your perfect amount in the comments below and especially why that amount works for you. Uh, I'm very interested to hear that. Now, don't forget to like this video. Check out the Urban Gentry official merchandise in our new store. Follow on the Instagram, join the UGWC on Facebook to engage with the watch community and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the new videos. Thank you very, very much for watching. Onwards, upwards, and catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.